A massive oil spill on Exuma tarnishing its crystal clear waters. The acting prime minister and area representative is on the ground as officials explain what led to the disaster. And the 10% increase in social assistance as inflation continues to rise. Plus, we'll tell you the jobs the public service is making possible for people with disabilities. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. 35,000 gallons of oil spilling in Exuma waters overnight. The environmental disaster prompting acting Prime Minister Chester Cooper and other officials to visit the site this afternoon. Our Marlena Leonard was on the ground in Exuma as the DPM visited the site. Now, government agencies as well as local companies and BPL acted very quickly. These containment buoys were deployed as soon as they got permission, which was early this morning. So we did a view of the water from these boats, and as far as anyone can see, it is successfully contained right now. They are currently deploying a second line of buoys, as you can see behind us, and they're trying to keep everything in as much as they can. Now, we had the tide on our side. The wind was coming in this way, doing its best to keep the diesel in the area. We do not wish to see these types of instances in the Bahamas. Shortly before jetting to Exuma, Cooper told Parliament that he was informed that the spill occurred sometime between 5 p.m. on Tuesday and 4 a.m. this morning. A vessel contracted by Sun Oil Limited was offloading fuel to BPL in the area of Old Navy Base in Georgetown. The result, a once crystal clear bay, was transformed by murky waters. Additional booms are on the way uh, to the site. Also, uh, additional pumps uh, have been secured by BPL and will be here uh, shortly uh, to uh, accelerate uh, the process. When our news arrived at the scene this afternoon, the smell from the fumes was overpowering. We also asked the manager for BPL's Exuma facility if the spill would impact power generation to that island. The fuel that is spilled here will not impact our operation. We have more fuel. This is only a portion of it. Yeah, but we have enough fuel. This is not the first time Sun Oil has had a spill in the Bahamas. Back in August 2018, there was a diesel fuel spill that contaminated the marina at Exuma's Emerald Bay Resort. But this incident, especially that it's not the first time, leaves many asking questions about the repercussions for companies like this and what the administration might call down on them, considering its huge focus on blue carbon credits and the environment. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. Well, Sun Oil Limited issuing a statement this afternoon, noting it was around 4 a.m. Wednesday morning when crew members of the Mount Arabian, which was contracted by Sun Oil Limited to deliver diesel fuel, discovered a leak during the discharging process. Sun Oil says at sunrise, the crew deployed absorbent pads and containment buoys near the shoreline. The release adds Sun Oil's leadership team activated its crisis management protocol and traveled to Exuma to further assess and respond to the situation. Fuel recovery procedures remain ongoing, led by owners of the Mount Arabian. And as Bahamians grapple with the hardship of escalating prices due to global inflation, the Ministry of Social Services is looking to provide some relief by increasing assistance. Berthany McDermott reports. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to announce in this honorable house that my ministry will increase the rates of financial assistance rendered through the Community Support <coughs> Services Division of the Department of Social Services effective August 2022. That increase, according to the Social Services Minister, will be 10% across the board. Wilshkam says the intervention from government is more essential than ever. He says the decision comes as a result of inflation that has been negatively impacting the pockets of many Bahamians. In response to the increasing financial challenges faced by Bahamians across the length and breadth of our country, the Ministry of Social Services and Urban Development through the Department of Social Services has made adjustments to the Ministry's Social Safety Net Benefits Assistance Program. The last time there was an increase was back in 2013. Speaking to Parliament Wednesday morning, Wilshkam explaining that in the previous budget period, thousands of Bahamians received food, medical and rental assistance, among other things. Food Assistance Program, Madam Speaker, we were able to assist 95,000 citizens of our country. Our utilities program, Madam Speaker, we assisted 376 persons 
in our rental assistance program, 837 individuals. In our burial assistance, 103. Uniform assistance, Madam Speaker, 296 students received assistance. Gas assistance, three persons. Reporting for our news, I'm Bertheny McDermott. Former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis calling inflation a problem that continues to be extremely challenging for Bahamian families. Dr. Minnis making the comments addressing the Free National Movement's Carmichael Association's monthly meeting. It is hard, extremely hard, for Bahamians to buy gas, to fill their cars, to go to work. It is hard for fishermen to buy gas, to fill their boats, to make a living. And as a result of this increase in cost to the fishermen, we can expect the price of fish and corn to also increase. Dr. Minnis also had this to say. Our inflation is as a result of international, not domestic. And increasing our interest rate would be disastrous. Your mortgages will go up, your bills and other expenses will subsequently increase. So the government should do, and I am not speaking policy for the FNM. I do not have that right. The government should do as we had done when we were in power. That is, we have removed VAT of BPL, of electricity bill, to a certain level. Well, a few showers on the radar. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Thanks, everybody, and welcome for our first look at weather on another warm evening outside our studios right now. Temperatures are in the mid-80s, 86, and some passing clouds. Winds are still out of the southeast, bringing in that warm tropical air mass at 10 miles per hour on your field site temperature. Ooh, very warm, 92 degrees on the outdoors. Today we had lots of sunshine, the ridge of high pressure remains in firm control of our weather. We had some Saharan dust that's been lingering across the area, but most of that has dissipated. We expect another batch of that to be arriving sometime by the end of the week. But in the meantime, that ridge will continue to keep us very quiet weather-wise. Some spotty isolated showers across the extreme northwest Palmas, but all in all, it's going to remain rather dry and rather hot. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, why the tourism and aviation chief says plans for Grand Bahamas Airport remain in limbo. And violence in schools prompting CCTV in campuses across the country. Plus how the public service is expanding inclusion in its workforce. Stay with us. A 19-year-old man was charged with murder in the broad daylight shooting of Kevin Wims earlier this month. Brendan Smith of Meadow Street was not required to enter a plea when he made his first court appearance before senior magistrate Carolyn Voigt Evans today. Smith was denied bail. He is next scheduled to appear in court on October 3rd for the presentation of a voluntary bill of indictment, which will fast-track his case to the Supreme Court for trial. According to police, 32-year-old Wims was driving his Nissan Note along Essex Street off Shirley Street around 3 p.m. on July 1st, when the occupants of another car pulled alongside him and opened fire. Wims, whose street name was Hot Boy, was shot multiple times and he was pronounced dead on the scene. At the time of his murder, Wims was on bail for murder and attempted murder. The charges stemmed from a shooting on October 23, 2018 that killed Kelson Kelly and injured Jeremy Util.
Well, two men accused of wounding a senior ranking policeman as he stopped them from stabbing another man were today denied bail. Magistrate Shaka Serville telling the court he was concerned that 22-year-old Antonio Thompson and 21-year-old Jamal Maycock would commit further offenses if released. Prosecutors say both men were on bail for murder when they stabbed Kevin Pratt multiple times on July 11th during the junketing parade in downtown Nassau to celebrate independence. Day. Chief Superintendent Marino Hines was stabbed in the hand as he came to Pratt's rescue. Details of the pending murder case were not available. The Hay Street residents have pleaded not guilty to a charge of grievous harm and denied wounding Hines and committing an aggravated assault against him. Their trial is scheduled to begin on September 20th. Meanwhile, a Grand Bahama man was seriously injured following an industrial accident on the Warren J. Laverty Highway shortly before 7 Tuesday morning. Police say a man was operating a bulldozer when he fell asleep and drove overboard in nearby waters. Police tell us the man was able to swim to safety and get help from another employee. He was taken to the Rand Memorial Hospital in a private car and police say his injuries were listed as serious. Investigations are continuing. And the Grand Bahama International Airport has had its share of challenges as Grand Bahamians wait for a proper facility. Well, tonight, the Tourism and Aviation Minister reveals more will be done. Our Italia Hall joins us in studio with the story. Well, Christina, the Grand Bahama International Airport has been operating out of a temporary facility since the passage of Hurricane Dorian. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism and Aviation Chester Cooper says more will be revealed soon, adding that the government has not yet selected a preferred private partner out of the three interested parties. These people are still interested and there are significant prospects uh, for this to happen in short, in short to medium term. But we're working through the details at the moment. But he says progress is underway at the international airport. Uh, we are constrained with how much we spend on the airport in the, sh in the short to medium term. We want to ensure that the workers are working in good conditions. Our prim primary concern at the moment is the health and safety of the workers. And we are going to make adequate adjustments to ensure uh, that they are in a good place. Now, the Deputy Prime Minister also says he will be giving an update on the sale of the Grand Lucayan Hotel later this week. Back to you, Christina. And operations at Lyndon Pinling International Airport are back to normal two days after scores of airport workers did not show up for work. About 90 percent of the 200 plus Bahamas Public Service Union members at LPIA and more than 100 workers at 17 Family Island airports did not report to work on Monday. A Supreme Court judge declaring the action illegal, ordering employees back to their posts. Tourism and Aviation Minister Chester Cooper says he hopes the issues are settled by the end of August. It's important for uh, workers that we work in harmony together with the union, and that is what we are going to do. Uh, now that we've normalized the airport, our priority is ensuring that uh, the workers' rights are preserved, and we want them to know that uh, we're standing with them, and we're going to ensure that they are not adversely impacted uh, because of uh, ongoing discussions and negotiations between the union and the government. Cooper says he's grateful the workers are back on the job. I have always been an advocate for ensuring that the workers get everything that they are legitimately entitled to. I continue to push to cause this to happen. I am happy that we have restarted uh, conversations with the president and we anticipate o o over the course of the next uh, few days uh, we'll be making significant advance. When our news comes back from the break, CCTV to be rolled out on school campuses. Plus, coming up in Sports for you tonight, Jazz Chisholm making his debut on the red carpet of this year's All-Star Game. We'll give you a look at that. We'll also tell you how one of our bodybuilding athletes Fania Joseph, all set to head on down to Barbados for the CAC Championships. And we'll also take a look at what's ahead as the Old Timers Softball Association gets set to kick off. That's coming up in sports.
And later, inclusion in the workplace as the public service makes job opportunities for people with disabilities. The details when our news returns. This is our news. Welcome back. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Michael Darville tabling the Mental Health Bill 2022, which will repeal and replace the current Mental Health Act 1969. Dr. Darville says the current bill is not compliant with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons Suffering from Physical Disabilities or other international conventions the Bahamas has signed on to. The aim of this new Mental Health Bill 2022 is to regress, redress the inequality and promote and protect the rights of persons suffering from mental illness. The focus of this new Mental Health Bill is to promote, when possible, community treatment along with voluntary admissions to a mental health facility. And the Ministry of Education is looking at introducing CCTV in public schools. That's according to Education Minister Glenn Atana Martin, who says the ministry has taken a zero-tolerance approach to violence in schools. Hannah Martin calling on stakeholders to partner with the ministry in this initiative. There will be a zero-tolerance tol for school violence or violence on our campuses. And appropriate interventions will be made to ensure our children are permitted to learn in safe environments. And I call on parents and the wider community to work with us in ensuring this objective is achieved for the sake of our children, not for me. A child should be able to safely go to school and learn and leave and go home. Yes. Well, Jazz Chisholm walks the red carpet at the MLB All-Star Game and a Bahamian bodybuilder talks preparation for competition. Here's Marcellus Hall. All right, thanks a lot and welcome to our sports everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Last night, the Major League Baseball All-Star Contest taking place in Los Angeles, California. Our very own Jazz Chisholm unable to make a start because of an injury. However, that did not stop the young Bohemian All-Star from ticking to the red carpet. Let's take a look. Jazz Chisholm unable to play in his first All-Star game last night due to an injury. That didn't stop him, however, from making an appearance on the red carpet. Jazz, who became the first Bohemian to become an all-star was voted as a starter for the National League at second base. Meanwhile, on the heels of a successful Nationals this past weekend, the Bahamas Bodybuilding and Fitness Federation will now send a team to compete at the CACs in Barbados. Bikini competitor Fania Joseph, a guest on this week's Locker Room, coming up on Friday, she talked about the preparation. Prepping for a competition, whatever Whatever the category, bikini, men's physique, it, it's very challenging yeah, yeah, mentally. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to even, you know, stress how uh, taxing it is on the body, having to sometimes work work out twice per day. It's it's hard, but like you said, it's a sport that I too have come to love. And the Old Timers Softball Association ready to open up their season this coming Saturday. A total of nine teams will compete in the league for the first time in more than two years since the COVID-19 pandemic got started. They'll do so on a newly refurbished ballpark as the Archdeacon William Thompson Park has gotten a huge facelift. Looking forward to seeing the action once again get back underway. And there it is, your check on sports for you here on this Wednesday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you. Thanks, Marcellus. Still ahead in our news tonight, a 50th birthday celebration for one local company. We'll tell you which one. Plus, Greg is back in the Weather Center with our extended weather forecast. And later, we tell you how the public service is expanding inclusion for the disabled community. That's coming up when our news returns.
Welcome back to our news. Bahamas Welding and Fire celebrating 50 years of service today with a Junkanoo rush out and cake cutting ceremony. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram on hand for the event, saying the company has played a vital role in the economy. Their intuition, understanding the need to fill a void in the supply of firefighting equipment and for good welding services, expanded to include the manufacture of gates and security bars and then supply of industrial and medical gases in the small British colony of the Bahama Islands on the brink of independence. And their effort was admirable. Well, our chances of rain are creeping higher and higher. Greg is back in the Weather Center with our extended outlook. Thanks and welcome back everybody for our second look at weather. Ridge of high pressure dominating our weather, keeping us dry, hot and humid. And that ridge continues to extend into the uh, Gulf of Mexico. That dry air mass will continue to keep our temperatures rather warm during the day. Temperatures will get up into the low 90s, but your feels like temperature will be in the triple digits. Some Saharan dust that's been with us has waned some, but we do expect another batch of that in the far Atlantic to move into our area by the end of the week. So we're looking for that continued dry weather pattern. Breezy conditions across the central and southeast Bahamas but the winds will not really do much in terms of the heat as we will continue to see those very warm temperatures throughout the remainder of the week. Boating forecast for the northwest Bahamas tonight to tomorrow your winds will be east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots. Seas running 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your low tide will be at 846 tonight. For the central and southeast Bahamas caution flag for you guys down there. East to southeast will wind flow at 15 to 20 knots. Seas will be running 4 to 6 feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your seven day forecast, not much change in the weather. That high pressure will remain in charge. Sporty, isolated afternoon showers possible, but dry air mass will continue to keep temperatures rather warm throughout the remainder of the week. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe evening, everybody. Thanks, Greg. And great news for Bahamians with disabilities. State Minister for Public Service Pia Glover Roll announcing plans to roll out the Public Service Professional Engagement Program, which she says will give people with disabilities the same career opportunities as other public service workers. Marlena Leonard has more on this story. The Ministry of Public Service is taking steps toward becoming more inclusive to Bahamians with disabilities, like Freeport native Royanne Mott, who says her job search left her jaded. I tried, to I tried to keep looking, looking, job. looking for a job. I feel like I feel like I just I gave up. Mott has been studying at BTVI, but says finding employment beyond backpacking has been difficult. Her dream is to become a customs officer. State Minister for Public Service Pia Glover Roll says the Public Service Professional Engagement Program, also known as PS Prep, will be a step in creating a country where people who have physical disabilities have equal opportunities. This will provide on the job training opportunities that will eventually lead to entry level placement and designated career paths for those who successfully matriculate through the program. Through the PS Prep program, these persons will be provided with the training support, and any special considerations they may need to successfully enter, be productive, and succeed within the public service. Cheyenne Chipman, president of the CORE Project, says this new initiative will balance the playing field. Wherever, you know, um, the um, individuals are qualified, you know, they just want an opportunity to show that they're capable. And because they're differently able, it doesn't mean that they're not able or capable. The state minister says this program should start next month, and while it currently will only incorporate Nassau, she hopes that this initiative will show that it's effective and will be able to involve Family Island soon. Reporting for our news, I'm Marlena Leonard. For more stories like this and all of today's top stories, visit Our News Bahamas on Facebook. Well, thank you for joining us for Our News tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.